And we just want everybody to know that our main objective with, with this chicken ordinance was so that everybody would keep their chickens on their property in a pen and uh, we had several instances where the chickens were running loose and I, and I went through one street here to the, uh, back some time ago and there was probably 45, 50 chickens out in the road and you know uh, we just can't have that and, and uh, we've got two proposals here and uh, and I doubt if I doubt if we will vote on either may not vote on either one coming Monday night. Uh, uh, we, we probably just need to discuss this some more and, and talk about it and, and get people's feelings on this. Okay. I don't know what the procedure is. Thank y'all very much for entertaining uh, you know, the, the citizens here in Sargonsville. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I, the concern is a lot bigger than what's here, but I had the feeling that things were kind of going the right direction, so we didn't bring a great big crowd because we didn't want it to be uh, overwhelming or anything. But uh, people feel pretty strong about this. And I know some people may not understand why, and there's, there's a couple of reasons behind it that, that it is a ruffle so many feathers, so to speak. Uh, one is that we live in Tennessee because this is what we love. Uh, it's a conservative state, and we live in Hawkins County, and that's a rural county, and we live in Sargonsville, and that's a small town. And none of that's by accident. We're here because we love this area and we love this lifestyle. And part of this, I think, is a failure of the education system because we're not taught in school anymore uh, the things that we need to know about our history and our culture. We're, uh, but all of the Appalachian Mountains, East Tennessee, Southwest Virginia, Western North Carolina, uh, was settled by the Scotch and the Irish for the most part. They couldn't afford the good land, and they got pushed up into the mountains, and that's where they stayed. But because we were taught our ancestry, um, we have a, an extremely rich culture that our children don't even know about. You know, uh, this area is known for moonshine. And uh, the reason that there's moonshine here in this area, and it's not a lot of other places in the country, is because the Scotch and the Irish brought it with them. But, but they, they escaped Ireland. <clears throat> and this, this started back in the 1600s because of the oppression from England. But they wanted to punish those people, and they did. They oppressed them every way in the world. Every time they turned around, there was a new law, there was a new tax, a new fee, a new fine. Everywhere they looked, they couldn't do anything. They couldn't survive. And it got to where they couldn't even uh, own land. And so they, they came here, and it was a lot of trouble. I mean, this wasn't the easy path for them. You know, they, they lost their lives and lost everything they had just to come here. And they came here for, for, for freedom. That was the reason they came. They, it was just in their nature. They didn't want somebody to tell them every little thing to do. And if you think about that just a little bit, you'll realize that that's who we are. Well, you know, as a people, uh, as a mountain people, we don't like somebody to dictate every little thing and tell us every little thing to do. And uh, so the, the tendency, whenever a problem arises, and it's not just the United States but all over the world, every time a problem arises, if there's a, a public official their first reaction is, we'll make a law about that. We'll just make a law. But sometimes there's a better way, well, about all the time there's a better way to handle it. Um, so right now, the, the bigger fender of the chickens, um, it was a little Mexican couple, and uh, 
I went and talked with them, and they're nice as they could be. They didn't know they were offending anybody. Once they did, they put the chickens up, and we bought a coop and took it down there, set it up for them, and, and they're on their way to building a pen around it. So that uh, so if we can solve that problem that way without having to make another law, but you know there's that old saying, uh, if all you got is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Well, so we don't we got so many laws on the books. There's no way people can know what they all are. And chickens aren't these animals that just you know just run wild all over everywhere. They pretty much stay kind of close to where they where they live. And a lot of people have chickens. One thing, because chicken prices have doubled and egg prices have tripled, and people, part of our culture is we're a self-reliant people. We enjoy having a garden. We enjoy having chickens so that we can provide food for our family. And people feel threatened by that. And they, a lot of people want free-range chickens because there's so much, the eggs are so much better for you. But I, want, I gave some examples of laws the other day to warn, and I'm not even using the same ones I did the other day, but Every time somebody has a problem, a law is not the solution. I'm going to give you a few right here. In Missouri, you can't drive down the highway with an uncaged bear in the car. And that, that's a law. Once these laws go on the books, they never go away. And you all may not, you know, plan on uh, making a big deal out of some of these things, but once the law's on there, who comes after you and who comes after them? Uh, in Farmington, Connecticut, cows have the same rights as motorists. In Orlando, Florida, elephants require the same parking meter charges as a full-size vehicle. These are real laws. They're really on the books. North Dakota, it's illegal to serve beer and pretzels together. In Florida, unmarried women are not allowed to parachute on Sundays. In Bristol, Tennessee, a woman may not adjust her stockings in public. It's considered a lewd act, and it's punishable by 12 months in the state penitentiary. <laughs> in Michigan, a woman's hair belongs to her spouse, and she may not alter it without her husband's permission. In Memphis, Tennessee, a woman can't drive a car unless there's a man with a red flag in front of the car warning other people on the road. I'm sure, I'm sure Tennessee does. <laughs> they do. Uh, in Texas, two trains, if they make two trains meet at a crossing, each shall stop. Neither shall pass until the other has passed. <laughs> in Oneida, Tennessee, there's an ordinance that forbids anyone to sing, It Ain't Gonna Rain No Mo. And the last one, uh, well, I've got more, but Texas. Criminals are required to give a 24-hour notice, either orally or in writing, to explain the nature of the crime to be committed. And if we could get that passed, if we could, if we could not, uh, make sure that that worked, that solved a whole lot of problems. But anyway, that, this, that's re the ridiculousness of some of these laws, and there's just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds oh, of them. Yeah. So, I'll say okay, so let's let making laws or ordinances uh, that are enforced with fees and fines and penalties just the last course of action. And you know, we don't want uh, to argue about how many chickens or what size coop they got to be in or anything like that. We, we just we don't want any part of it. I understand these things can be a nuisance; they can be dealt with individually, but. People, people want their chickens because they want to be able to, the, the right that to was, be able to provide for that the family. Never, that was never discussed here. Yeah. <laughs> but the law that was written, let me tell you, I'm, I'm a landscape yeah. contractor. I'm a landscape contractor. Sometimes I bid on jobs, and on these jobs they have specs, and it tells you all the specs. You start reading it, and you figure out that these specs don't apply to that particular job because there's something in there that's not even on that job. Yeah, there's a missing work. equation. Yeah, and so what happens is I wouldn't doubt if the law that was proposed wasn't lifted from a bigger city somewhere and tried to put down in Sir Gorsel. Yeah. So that is going to fly here. That's why I'm saying that not, not one of these board members would have voted for the ordinance that was passed on the first reading. 
Now, the board has, has uh, suggested something, and, and then Vince has suggested something, and I think we could we could live with either one of them. But wouldn't the we best option be to, to well, just let the community deal with it and not make a new yeah, law? Yeah, we've dealt like with that's the, the whole, That's why everybody's here now is this doesn't deserve a new law being put on the books. The one, I, one I sent out was the one I got from you all the other day. I thought, you know, I like basically. Okay. Yeah, that was one. That, the one y'all sent me the other day is the one that's been proposed plus the one. Can we do the proposals? Can yeah. we do the proposals? I can write it. The one from Saturday morning, every resident of Sergongsville is responsible for keeping any animals they own on their property or on public walkways. In the latter case, animals may be accompanied by an owner or owner's agent who shall keep animals under their control and shall remove any feces they deposit. For the first infraction, the owner will receive a warning. Subsequent infractions shall be subject to a $50 civil fine. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. This one's a little bit longer. Um, See, my big worries with any laws like that whatsoever, that like there's also what always should be consideration. If somebody's dog steps off the sidewalk, they're getting a fine for it. Like it's, you know, just, I don't, the cops need to know like you don't just persecute people for making a mistake or an accident happening. Like it needs to be something that's repetitive before you're gonna enforce it. And just common sense, just being a good neighbor. And that's what we're worried about. And it's like the people enforcing the laws and not actually acting like our neighbors. I, I've got a, I've got eight seven like farm up the street here. And if you you say I can have this six chickens or twelve chickens. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> we need to go in there on that one. No. <laughs> That's no longer a problem. Listen, listen, what I said. What we voted on on the first reading is out. No, nope, nobody on this here will vote for that. Yeah, this one. What's the other problem? Yeah. Hey, but now you've got a farm and, and your chickens can run free range as long as they don't go on somebody else. I mean, then it's up to you and whoever is your neighbor. But, um, I can read this next proposal if you'd like. It's a little long, so bear with me. This is a proposal to add these definitions. Um, identification leg bands, which contain unique identification information, are required to establish ownership of chickens found outside owner's property. Repeat offenders. Owner of chickens found off property more than once weekly or five times in a 30-day period and then to replace the existing text or penalty as follows. Female chickens may be kept in the town subject to the following A. Chickens on all properties must be kept in such a manner that they remain on subject property and do not get on other property streets or roads. B. Manure must be removed in such a manner it does not cause an offensive smell at the property line and does not attract flies and or other harmful insects or animals. C. Noise does not encroach on nearby houses or businesses. D, on property of five acres or more, free reign is permitted provided the chickens do not get off the subject property. E, on property of less than five acres, chicken habitat must be fenced with material which will prevent the chickens from getting out of the habitat area. And then F, leg bands which will facilitate return of chickens are found if, are found off owner property are required. Owners are encouraged to pre-register unique identification marks with the building inspector to facilitate identifications. Chickens which are on other property, streets, or roads without leg bands with illegible leg bands <coughs> or with unregistered leg bands are not immediately claimed, are considered wild, and may be seized as a public nuisance and euthanized. Identi identified off-property chickens may be returned to owner's property along with a citation. Two-time repeat offenders may have the privilege of keeping chickens revoked by the building inspector. This may be appealed by the BOZA. Enforcement, the building inspector is designated to enforce the provisions herein. 
penalty, a fine of fifty dollars per each no. offense. No, <laughs> no you, I, I, nobody, no, like, nobody, nobody here is like getting like, like, sick. Don't go down that road. You're is this America, America or China? Yeah, none of that. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's just communism. Yeah, that's, that's exactly, exactly what we call be burned. I don't know who came up no, with that. We got to buy banding tools, bands. We got to strap. Yeah, that ain't going very far. Don't I'm make no laws. That's here. just a bunch of laws. That's exactly what we're fighting against here. <laughs> Everyone here is responsible for what they do. We have personal yeah. responsibility, and that's the yeah. problem with America. That's now, just opening the door. People that don't have personal and I think responsibility. if people need help doing whatever with their chickens, everybody in the community. Yeah, right. that's Amen. exactly right. That's, right. that's why you call it right. My neighbors right. help me. I'll help my neighbors. Yeah. I don't even. Well, yeah, you start passing these stupid, silly laws. Next thing you know, be if your dog barks, we're going to euthanize you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's just opening the door. Well, there's going to be a, deck, a nightmare. I mean, humanity going. It, small animals are protected more than young babies, so. It just gets, it gets real stupid. We're, we're all getting tired of being lawed to death from the yes, federal government. Boy, damn. We all live here state. in this area because this area doesn't govern like that. Right. And it's a it's a poison that gets in, so y'all can't let it get in. But we're not here about the chicken law. We're here about like we keep making yeah. new laws for garbage that's over one person having some chickens. Some Quit. <laughs> <laughs> I think some of them that were running around, I haven't seen them running around lately, so I think they some of them have been taken care of. They have been taken care of. Yeah. Problems dealt with. Community. Yeah, most of the time if you get with the community and talk one another, right. you can solve your own problems. Exactly. You don't need people sitting over top of you making exactly. yeah. so I'm, I'm going to make a proposal. I'm going to make a proposal based on the first uh, ordinance that we have the first reading of. There is something in here. I just, I'm going to bring something to the board. Uh, no person shall keep domesticated hens within the town in such a manner that a nuisance is created. That's my proposal that we just follow about. Don't create a nuisance. Like exactly what you're saying, be a good neighbor. Keep your chickens. But, that gives but that's a new law. Yeah. That's, that's, that's already going on. You don't need a new law. Right. I mean, no, if somebody people. has a problem and their neighbor complains yeah, about it, it you, talk, you deal with that one person. One at a time. Okay. I just, I think the nuisance can be subjective. Like maybe we need to be defined like what specifically that nuisance is. Yeah, if you've got a neighbor that's like to complain about it. Yeah. 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 So then you got a problem. What about your dogs? What about your kids? Yeah. Kids run up, I mean, do your kids even run up and down and play anymore? No, they don't go outside. <laughs> <laughs> they got tablets. I and mean, we don't need laws. No, that's the whole thing. No more new ones. I just read a list of some of the most ridiculous things, and they all started because somebody had a little complaint somewhere. And there's still little books. <laughs> And there's novels of these unintended consequences. Where did this component start? I've been trying to set fine chickens in a row on three trips right around the corner. I think in the community we could all together solve the problem. We have that lot. I've been the trail park this year. Yeah, they're running loose and friendly things. But they did. They've always been running loose. They were. That's been fixed by the community without a law. Who complains about it? Just don't, just don't start any new laws or any new ordinances, period. Unless everyone wants to. Well, Y'all understand there's already a law on the books, right? Yeah, don't. Tennessee state law. It's class C misdemeanor. Here, here it is. It says, it is unlawful for the owners of any livestock, and chickens is considered livestock, under the definition of TCA. It says... As defined under 43.1.114, to willfully allow livestock stock to run at large in this state. Well, Tennessee's already got one. But so, so we already got that's to, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. to willfully let them run live so you take care of the one person that's doing it. That's you don't right. punish yeah. everybody else. That's right. If the law's there, you use it. Use that law and forget about the rest of it. Right. Yeah, I am down Anderson Street. I don't know where he knows where he's at. No. And I've got pictures on my phone there about 40 chickens in the neighbor's yard. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's one yard. individual's chickens. Uh, don't punish us. Coming in here a minute ago, there was three in, in on the side of the pasture. Were they bothering you? <laughs> 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 Are you scared? 
Well, it's just the natural tendency of people in government to, to make laws to oppress everybody beneath them. Yeah. We we're, we're just don't want it. That's just the opposite of America. Why not go and talk to them and, and, and you know, we can, you know, at the community and help these people. Yeah. They need it. Don't go and threaten them. Just ask them if they need help. The minute you start threatening people, so they get offensive. So that's you make two, a, you make more that's two no. people, and how many people do we have? I mean, you know. <laughs> you come to me and threaten me, you got a problem. Because yeah. I don't take threats very good. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we I all have houses in this area for a reason. Putting for chickens in the road, and I, I went to places where if I was a chicken, I'd be hunting spot that way out too. But if you go, if you go start with chickens, then you're going to get poor. Exactly. It's going to go to goats, it's going to go to hogs, it's going to go to rabbits, you won't be able to have a dog in your house. Or garden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you're supposed to register your gardens. This stuff is all anti-American and it's evil. <clears throat> all these ideas go against what your grandparents and your great-grandparents fought for. Anybody else got anything to say? You got anything, Greg? No? No. You? We're dismissed. Can I make a proposal, though? Yeah. Can y'all give me an opportunity to fix it first before we go any further? Give me an opportunity to fix it first before we go any further. I'll go talk to all these people that have chickens that run loose. And yeah, I've got a question. How many phone calls did you get regarding chickens? I know we kind of covered that in one of the yeah, meetings, and it wasn't full. Probably of... eight or ten. And that does take... That, that was the reason, now, we did not propose the first reading. That was brought to us to read, to adjust, to vote on. Part of the proposed $25 permit, which I did disagree with, was to cover the cost of police calls to go check on chickens. So just to explain that. So you did get police like how eight have to calls. Check on well, then don't call you the police on chickens. We if the call will right, right, but if the call is right. being placed. Well, don't they spend the ride around and, and take a community out of the way and get their job? That's their job, but yeah. if you're getting sure. a specific so call. So somebody yeah. added this to the budget that they were going to check on chicken calls. They, they put that on the budget. They should they understand that. He's got something else to say. There was just a couple of people calling their peak time. Right, okay. So that but you still got. have to go check on them. But I still have to follow up. Right. Well, I mean, I'm not justifying it. I'm just explaining. Yeah. Since this was not a well, you know, you can, form. You can make it. You can make it say, look, if, you, if you're not going to help the community out with, with keeping your chickens penned up or whatever it is got to do, well, then we're going to make us rule that you're going to be fine. You as an individual. Don't punish the whole community for exactly. what a right, couple yeah. of people are doing. Right. right. Yeah, if it's malicious and consistent. Yes. Yes. Then I agree with it. If, if, right. it, if they're not going to want to uh, do well, right, I, yeah. then fine. But don't punish everybody because you got a couple of, you know, a bad eggs. So now, isn't it enable to be able to find the repeat offenders? Don't we have to have something in place to be able to enforce those fines? Well, it would have to be, it would have to be malicious out of laziness and because they didn't care and if somebody could repeat to just let their stuff run loose, then yeah, at that point they have the right to just blow everything up and take it wherever's off of their property. But that's not the case. That doesn't happen very often. And if it does, it, have, it stops really quick. Chickens get too far from the house. Number one, when it gets dark, they go back in their house. They don't stay out and keep wondering. They will be in the, you raise them in a pet carrier. They'll go in that pet carrier every night. Wait a minute. You have two people, two, that has complained about chickens. No, no there's been more than two, but it's a couple of different couples. Okay, but I thought you said a couple two or three, of people. Four people. Okay. Yeah. Consistent. Okay. Okay, four people that have complained about and obviously there's a reason they complain, whether it's minor or major for them. Look what it's created. I mean, we're all intelligent people here. We can do what's right. Okay, I think that you proposed a wonderful beginning instead of creating any law since Tennessee has a law on the books. And that's the only law you need to stand by. Okay. Yeah. The ones that are yeah. already on the books. That's right. That's right. No new ones. And, and this gentleman here does his job. He goes out. He records that he got the complaint. He went out and spoke to the people and, he, and made it clear to them if I come out again, it's going to be a fine. 
And that's already a law. He, he has to abide yeah, by it. He has to abide by that law anyway. Yeah. Just fight the tendency to keep making new laws. Yeah. That's why every one of us is here. Because yeah. there's no need for new laws. Yeah, we appreciate you finding the law already on the book. That seems to have solved everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but correct me, Mr. Attorney, is the state law, would it have to go through state court? Sessions. If we have a municipal myriad mm -hmm. the same as this, then it could come through city court, correct? Is that what we would accomplish by putting up? That's what I was asking. You'd have to have a city ordinance. City ordinance. And that would keep us from having to go to state court where major misdemeanors are committed with chickens running large, correct? Same as traffic tickets. Right. That's what I was getting at. But it would it would be the same same statute just in the city ordinance. Right. I've got chickens running at large by my neighbors. I've I raise snouts. They're great because they eat the ticks. They eat the ticks, keep them off my dog. I got some ducks that's running at large that love to use my garage as a repository. That gets irritating. Okay. Um, so. Now I can understand people complaining if, if you got 40 <laughs> chickens out there crapping on the sidewalk, you better walk on them. Now, I understand that. You know, that's honestly it's not fair to the people that walk on the sidewalks. But go after the people that are making the offense. Don't pass a law that affects everybody, everybody in, yeah. in, in, in the town. Because we're all very responsible. I ain't seen 40 chickens anywhere. I ain't either. I've never seen 40 chickens anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Come to my house, they're about 20. I mean, Look, you got some running around loose. That's a but, blessing. You're not going to have mosquitoes. But, you're not going to have a bunch of bugs. But there again, I'm a good neighbor. And, yeah. 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 It, it's it's doing me a service. I don't want to do it. I got it. Yeah. I think the first complaint that came up, wasn't it about a rooster that was waking people up? Early in the morning, I think that's, yeah. that's God's alarm clock. Yeah, I put it the door when we woke up. Yeah, we can't go down that road. You know, we God. Yeah, because I wake up to turkeys at 6 o'clock every morning and I don't know them. The state statute we wear as an ordinance and a report. Are we going to have to worry about this coming up on the 13th? Is this. Yes. yes. We are? Yeah. Do we need to bring more first. people for that? Or is there going to be a vote on the 13th? Because we did, we did, we help people back. Yeah, we can bring a hundred or so in here. We Are we under a consensus that since that there is already a state law in place, we're okay with? Yeah, no new laws. Right. Okay, but the, to, the, this is this this is what I was trying to get at and explain is in order to enforce what is already on the books at a municipal level instead of going to the state level, we have to pass an ordinance. We can pass the we same thing. So you can you just have reinforce the ordinance this You right. have to reinforce what is there so okay. that Sir Boingsville can handle it versus the state of Tennessee. And that that's what we were going for, but what we were doing is we were taking a larger scale ordinance and okay. adjusting it okay. to a small town. Okay, that is not the thing that had to go about the well, banding that. was first that. reading. Yeah, okay. That was first reading. Nobody okay. was going to vote on the ordinance. Nobody's trying yes. to place laws yes. in place that are preventing okay. you from keeping okay. tickets. That's what I'm trying to explain. Well, there was a tendency to make sure that they stayed in coops, and that's the wrong yes. direction. Yeah, the wrong direction. Well, that was first reading. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it, but that's the tendency of bureaucracy. We're trying to keep them yeah. enclosed, but I, I also disagree with keeping them in coops. They, yeah, should, have, they should have a run. Yeah. They should have a run. Yeah. But if it's creating a nuisance and the state of Tennessee has a law that no livestock should be running at large to cause a nuisance, yeah. then there again, we, we need to start looking at You can't punish the whole, all right. the citizens for right. two people. Can't so that's it. why you've got to pass the ordinance to punish the people who are repeat offenders. Make sure it's clear yeah. that that's right. what the ordinance on both so states. Only to the offenders. I promise you, if our police chief runs around looking for 
chipping all day long. We, yeah. We got a problem with the police chief. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna have time for that. I was about to say the fact that they would go out on a call about a chicken. Oh, they do. They, well, they, you get a nine one one call. You've got a response. Oh, yeah. You should tell that person you don't call nine one one over a chicken. <laughs> Because if other people make a 911 call for a police reason. I got um, I've heard worse. people coming to my office I'm sure. about chickens that damage vehicles and stuff like that, and they take state warrants on them. That's, uh, that's not the neighbors I want. Yeah. <laughs> As a whole, this isn't meant to change how it's kept right now. This is for the offenders that are causing the no. issues. Yeah. We're just here to make sure it didn't change our futures and our family's futures as well, far as us. That, that never, no, never, nobody never wants that. That was never the intent. No. No, no, but it can go that way. Yes, really. It doesn't really. matter about intent. It's, that's how it was presented to us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, whether that's the intent or not, that is, the, the book I brought showed the warrant is called Unintended Consequences. It's that thick. It's 870 some pages. And it is the unintended consequences of laws that went on the books. Yeah, you, you have to look at the intent, but the 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 intent is always negative. I mean, what happens is even if it wasn't intentional, it's still destructive, and it's it always goes against freedom. Yeah. If you uh, submit this ordinance, you want to bring it before us so we can hear the verbiage, and make sure the verbiage is correct. It satisfies everybody. I can read it out loud. Yeah, before you pass it, before it goes in, get passed. Well, I want to know how it reads. That's it. Yeah, because it does make a difference how it works. That's just where you hit the next workshop. Why can we get a copy of the Tennessee state ordinance first, just for us to look at it in our next meeting? Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Next workshop. Yeah. Next work, next workshop being April. Is there a way to the gate? <coughs> we'll bring this up at the next well, workshop. Sorry. We'll do we'll that Monday night. Next Monday night. We'll 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 next Monday night. Is there a way to get off the road so that it takes three more weeks? Turn that over to the workshop. Well, he's They're talking about what's already passed. The first group. Can you get the gate? Next Monday night. Get it off the road. Next Monday night. 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 Next Monday Next Monday night. 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 But if everybody's, everybody's uh, concerned that they're going to bring their masses to a to a, the final vote, don't make it the final vote. Well, it be the same first law, vote. and we all can go on on yeah. the computer and find the state law. And, uh, yeah, but that's you guys. I'm just saying the rest of the public. Well, the everybody, vote. everybody's got. If you've got a computer, you yeah. you've got. But everybody doesn't know where to go look to find it. Well, look up Tennessee. TCA 44841. Livestock, not I think everybody's here because we want to keep this area traditional. We want to stick with what we've got now. We don't want any new changes. We don't want to be a big if Johnson City or real I moved to Tennessee the country. I look at the rest of the nation and how our country's changed. And I want Tennessee to stay the way it's always been. The open free state. Uh, at the next meeting we'll make a motion. Motion will somebody will have a motion made to take away the first reading that we had. Okay? Sure. Then from there, at the next workshop, we'll discuss about the Tennessee law. It's already on the book, adopting it for locality, the local government, and do that. And that way, there'll be a first and second reading on that. Okay. That's sufficient. Yeah, I just think everybody's concerned that whatever's going to happen, we'll just get both down and look at the second and final. That'll get them. Well, well, see, see the way it works. When we when we do the first reading of it, somebody will bring a proposal, and then at the second reading, you can change some wording if you there's some words in there that need to be changed and so on. 
We wanted to change all the words. <laughs> 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 the first reading, yeah, that was a non-starter. Well, we'll take, like I said, let's take the yeah, first yeah. reading. Make a motion. Okay, so what? Next Monday? Next Monday. They're saying no. We'll take it off as soon as next Monday. Is that there is a delay? Then, then the next workshop, next month, we will discuss. April the 3rd at 530, we'll discuss the new proposed from the state statute to a city ordinance to use it. We did. And then on the 10th of April is when we'll vote on it for the first time. Then I'll come back and ask to have two readings and then do two votes. But, but that's just the Tennessee just State Law. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank